my winning streak inside of the cryptocurrency market has finally come to an end. Inside of this video, I will be explaining to you the reasons for this losing trade, how I managed the long, which turned into a loss up at the high, and how I've actually given back around $300,000 worth of profit back to the market. So although I have took this losing trade and have given profit back on lower longs, I'm going to be using this experience as a very nice learning opportunity for yourselves watching this today. You're going to really get nice insights of how I manage these trades and how at times, even myself, yes, I'm taking losses. It is a normal and expected part of the game. And so, yeah, today the winning streak, bam, it's over took the loss and I'm never one to shy away or hide or you know ignore the loss I'm here to talk you through it and use this as a really nice educational piece so with that said let's go into the analysis and understand together where and how it went wrong so as you are probably aware right my bullish bias really started around the start of 2023 and for the past four coming on now five months I've been you know, flipping more and more bullish as time has gone on. Originally long starting from around sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars. But as we started to break through resistances, claim them as support, naturally, I you know I'm a trader that trades the charts level to level and trading the charts as they are. And as we start to go through 17,500, reclaiming the top of the range, 25K, moving up here above $28,000, you know, these for me are major levels that at the time, you know, you're seeing strength above the level. And so naturally, confidence rises as profits are increasing, but also in the chart, we are breaking through resistances. And so most recently, the trade that I want to talk you through is when we were trading up at around $29,000. And while we're up around here, I have major targets of $32,500. And so I myself at this moment am very fixated on my higher target. Of course, I'm, I'm always aware that uh, we, we might not hit it, which is at the case is, is, is happened, right? I'm aware that I could be wrong and price can drop down. About the time, I had no reasons to believe that was going to be the case. And so I have high confidence, you know, I've backed <laughs> millions of dollars worth of profits, uh, trades are going well, and, you know, I'm on this really nice winning streak. And I recognize that at some point, you know, that winning streak is going to end, nothing lasts forever. And this is trading, which is a game of probabilities. And so the losing trade that I took, and I think this is something that is really important that I really want people to understand, is because I do think a lot of people think I'm like some... Uh, like god of trading that just wins every single trade and you know that's not the case and i've never tried to portray that as the case you know i'm just like you watching this video right i'm a human i'm taking wins i'm taking losses thankfully you know i'm very good at what i do i've been doing this now almost 13 years i've got a lot of experience and knowledge gained um through the markets and thus i've, I've got a pretty decent win rate i think we can say so it's not often that i'm taking losses but uh you know i have took one I actually lost, uh, moving on to around half a million uh, dollars worth of profits um, from, from two trades, actually. So uh, let me explain them to you and how this came about. So while we're up here, you know, if we zoom in here a little bit, trading around $29,000, $30,000, okay? I have really high fixation on hitting my tar higher targets around $32,000. And uh, I really didn't think that this high here was going to be the high to be honest with you it did happen on the 14th of april which looking back now i had marked out week in advance of a very important fibonacci time pivot uh, and this is where i personally did let my underlying bias you know affect my analysis uh which was a mistake uh so i gave the week prior to this the 14th of february for a date to be aware of to all of the champions uh, this was a significant Fibonacci pivot high. If you remember, I also had a, the last uh, significant Fibonacci pivot high that I had was when we put in the high here around the 20th of February, right? So I had that as a significant Fibonacci pivot high, and that gave the retrace in price, you know, over 20% to the downside. And then I had the 14th of February, and this is so far given a 12%. You know, looking back, I, I, my, I should have gave more importance to the Fibonacci time pivot that I found. But I 
just had the underlying belief that we would hit 32k and so yeah unfortunately I, I didn't give as much weight to that Fibonacci time pivot but nevertheless we obviously got the pullback from here and we got the retest of the CC and for me this was a decent long opportunity because what am I going for here I'm actually going for the higher lows to be held so at the time I'm thinking to myself something along these lines where I'm looking for the higher lows to be formed and looking for this almost like ascending type of triangle move where I'm looking for continuation to the upside and so for me when we retested the CC this is a good long opportunity we come down took a series of lows and for me you know I'm, I'm looking to long the dip essentially so for me this is a naturally another good opportunity in an uptrend to long the pullback you know so far this has treated us very very well right made decent profits so continue to trade the trend i had expectations of continuing up and hitting around 32k um and of course in the end i have got that incorrect as we put in the lower high you can kind of see here how we have these ranges okay break down the range i'm expecting reclaim and continuation in the end my incorrect decision was the retest and falling totally down never got that sign of strength to reclaim resistance you know yeah I, I lost money on this trade but i wouldn't really class it as a bad trade to be honest with you uh, i had very good reasons for taking the trade and you know it's just part of the game right I, I did take the loss here but i personally wouldn't class it as a bad trade but uh, i didn't take take profit one on this trade that what maybe was my mistake uh, so when we re-came into the retest, which was on the VWAP, this was a really nice VWAP retest. There was reasons I should have took that that take profit. But uh, yeah, we hit the VWAP here and we pulled back. And I just, yeah, didn't lock in my take profit. I really felt that we would get a higher retest. And so that was my mistake of the, of the trade, really, because I didn't take that take profit. And as we broke down here, of course, I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to hold on to a trade forever and just hope and wish for the best and think, oh, you know, I think higher prices are going to come, so higher prices are going to come. No, I, I trade the charts, and of course, I closed out of that trade uh, as we simply broke down from the low, and ended up on that trade losing around fifty thousand uh, dollars worth of profits. You know, I didn't hit my take profit one. wasn't a massive for myself anyway. wasn't really a massive position size. I understood the risks. I understood, you know, we're very close to the target, but at the end of the day, it was a valid long, and yeah, ended up losing around fifty k on that trade. Um, for me, I, I'm not, you know it's fine and anyway we got the larger pullback and you know this is where i have to recognize now we have broke market structure right so now we have put in the low we have put in a lower high we have put in a lower low so we've got local market structure change and the overall range that we were seeing has broken to the downside this is your first initial sign of weakness and so naturally i'm still coming up with plans and ideas of okay now we've broken down here, we do have to prepare, plan and prepare for a continued move down. I made it very clear that if we lost this range low, uh, you know, I th really think we're going to at least $28,000 because there was not a lot of support on the uprise equals there's not a lot of support down here. So for me, there was no long opportunity here and wasn't all the way to 28K minus, right? And so naturally, this is the way that I plan out my trades. I'm prepared and prepared a few different scenarios. So here you see one of the few different scenarios that I gave within the champions. This is the inside of the daily live stream, right? And so I don't want you to think this was the one and only scenario that I gave. I gave a scenario where we would reject from the value area low, a scenario where we would reject from the value area high, and a scenario where we would continue upwards to $32,000. Uh, in the end, you know, this scenario is the one that played out. Okay, so... So you understand the way that I trade. I prepare myself for a bullish and bearish scenario. And then I trade the one which comes to fruition, which gives gives an actionable trade setup. Okay, so here at the value area low, we had no reaction at the time of anything bearish at all. There was there was nothing bearish on the value area low retest. And so there was no short trade to be had on that. And we look for the value area high, right? So you can see here, when we hit that, this is what it looked like in the time. So you can see. We go into that value area low and you can see straight into it holding it as support so at this time what do we look for we look for the value area high this is what we prepared for understood that when we come into this level we would see a bit of friction because it is a very important level so we understood there would be friction but as long as we you know overall are holding it we look for that value area high when that's when we can of course get the bigger drop and so we see here the move into the level 
and then we look for the value area high. Here we can actually see the value area I hit, low, lower high, lower low, loss of, at the time, the point of control. Okay, so, you know, from the play out here, we had to remain patient for the value area high target to be hit. And of course, from that value area high target being hit, we actually did see overall a pretty, you know, uh, you could call it nice prediction, overall a nice rejection from that value area high, right? And so then this scenario comes into play. Once you've seen the rejection here off of the high, that is a valid short trade. And for myself personally, I did take a short off of the value area high. But again, this is for trading the internal local range. And I'm also prepared for the scenario where we're putting in lower highs here. You know, that is a big weakness and it would see the drop to 28k. But I, I didn't really take enough size on this short. I didn't hedge myself totally. Uh, you know, that was also a mistake because overall I did feel, feel that we would hit $32,000. So I took this short here more for protection of myself and it was a valid short trade more so than I felt it was a good short. You know, I do, again, this is me trading the charts, right? I'm given a valid short trade setup. I've come up into my target, up into the level. There has been a valid rejection of that barrier area high. So I'm prepared for this scenario. Thus, you know, I'm not going to be scared to take that short trade, but I really felt I'd get stopped out of it, to be honest. Of course, now we can see I never got stopped out of that trade uh, as we actually hit that barrier area high retested it and you know fallen all the way back down to this lower daily level if you actually pull this along you can see here okay how that value area high that we were looking at really held the market down rejection here which you saw obviously on the wick and then you got this to the absolute dollar retest of the value area high before boom straight back down at this point major red flag major sign of weakness here locally um you know you've now continuously got the lower highs coming in new lower lows big breakdown you know there's volume coming in here on the break and you know from that breakdown uh, this is how i personally lost you know around three hundred thousand dollars worth of profit so this wasn't a losing trade per se because the longs are from lower but I have longs from 16K, have longs from just above 17,500, have longs still from 20,000, longs from 26,000. Of course, everything, all my longs above that are, are now closed. Uh, and on this trade, I've actually threw away around 300 grand of profit. Um, I'm not overall too annoyed by it because this, <laughs> this trade is still in profits of around 7 million. So... You know, I'm, I'm not too bothered on it, to be honest, to be quite frank. But, you know, I did throw away 300K. So, you know, um, you know, it's just is what it is. Right. And so moving on, you know, I have to accept that and look towards what I'm looking at next. So here I've given a few levels to my team and made it really simple and clear that if we cannot clear the resistance, then, you know, naturally I'm going to expect another drop on BDC to take out the lows. And we didn't clear resistance. The downtrend remains intact. And you see my next level here was, well, looking for a potential SFP, which didn't occur. We went straight through the level. So then my next daily level is here at $27,115. Okay, so naturally this is the next opportunity for me. 27115 Why? Because, well, when you look at this price action, there's absolutely no swing failure pattern, okay? We go straight through level. And when this goes straight through the level with no reaction, there's no trade at that. And we look for the next level to where we can see a reaction. And that was off of the daily 27,115. And at the, the daily level, which was at 27,115, okay, around that 27K daily level, you know, pretty clear. Given my team the daily level, I made it very clear. That's where the next opportunity is, around that 27K daily level pretty simple stuff unable to claim so next to the port we will test okay so at the time we've started to break down here you know this is what we had to expect if we're unable to reclaim resistance let's you know trade the charts and look for the daily level and what happens we actually got a exact touch of the daily to the exact dollar okay so here you can actually see how this gives a swing failure pattern setup lower term time frame there's the daily Bam, wick down into the daily. That is then your daily tested with a brilliant reaction, which gives a, and this is one I did take, a long trade opportunity. Okay, so this is a long trade entry, stop loss below the wick. Okay, and now I can be explaining to what we're looking at next. Of course, we got a pretty nice bounce here. I'll actually show you the level that we retested, a old weekly naked point of control. This is not a 
naked pointer control anymore because it's being tested, right? But this offered support on the first test, simply taking out a local high, drop back down, but that support has been now tested as resistance. So that weekly naked pointer control of the old, or you can now just refer it to as a support resistance level, has been tested and is what currently holds its down price action. These are now fresh levels that daily is of course tapped. And you know, this is the new trade that I'm in, along off of this level. And now we'll wait and see if this plays out overall. I will delete that level for you now, as it is a tested level. So let's come out here onto the one hour, zoom out slightly, and I will delete that fixed range. So now we can see a few new key levels that we have here, if we zoom in very nicely. So uh, that was the talk through, first of all, of my losing trades, how they came about. And now I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing now and what I'm looking for next. So just a quick recap. Um, you know, as mentioned before, many, many videos this year, I've said to you all, I'm bullish. I'm looking for higher. I'm expecting higher to come. I'm in no shorts. I'm in long trades. And, you know, I maintain bullish biases. And, you know, you've seen that play out correctly and correctly and correctly and correctly. You know, I've made and others very nice profits alongside me through that clear understanding bias and, and walkthroughs. But then naturally, I've always said, you know, if I get this wrong, I'll hold up my hands. I'll say, hey, I got this wrong, you know, and I did get it wrong on this time. You know, that was actually, if you go back and review, eight wins in a row. OK, and then after that eighth win, you know, I've then come in to take the ninth win and I've, I've lost the trade. Uh, so it's just part of the game, right? Had to end at some point, And I understood the reasons of how I misread the market. Really should have done more actionable. You know, really should have took more action upon seeing the VRAP re rejection, you know, the initial breakdown here, you know, again, I don't really feel it was a poor trade, but, you know, I think that my mismanagement was the fixation on higher prices, the ignore, you know, ignoring essentially the Fibonacci time pivot that I had on the 14th of April and not giving enough weight to that. That was my mistake. Of course, I was prepared for this larger drop, but I also didn't take enough position on the short trade here. So those were my mistakes, I think, ignoring the Fibonacci time pivot that I had on the 14th of April and then not really taking seriously the short trade opportunity that I had here. I did take it, but yeah, with not enough size. Um, you know, those were my mistakes. So I hope that you can learn from them. A few takeaway points then would be, you know, I'm a I'm normal human just as you. Uh, take wins, take losses. Uh, it's just part of the game. Losses are always going to be here. There's no way to avoid them. This is a game of probabilities. And, you know, just so you can see that trading is, you know, a difficult skill to master, right? Um, you, you're never going to be perfect. You're never going to win everything that you touch, right? Nothing, not everything turns to gold. You are going to take losses. It is not easy. Um... But, you know, with time, effort, you know, continuing and not giving up, you know, the profits that you can make are absolutely out of this world outstanding. Right. So, you know, it really is a life changing skill to have trading, but it's not easy. Uh, you're not going to, you know, become successful overnight. It takes time and, you know, perseveration. But even with myself 13 years, you know, I'm still taking losses, but it's that risk management, it's that understanding of probabilities, thinking and always thinking in probabilities. It, it not only changes your life, in my opinion, in terms of the way you think and approach daily life, but of course, understanding the market is, uh, you know, <laughs> changes your perspective on, on a lot of things. So, um, yeah, as talked through, that's the talk through of the loss and how I mismanaged that. And, you know, I apologize, I guess, for, for anybody that's, um, uh, also was affected by by that, that bad call. But yeah, eight wins in a row, had to end at some point, and I myself took that losing trade. So it is what it is, right? Uh, we move on and understand where's the next trade. Well, personally, I'm in a long from that daily, right? Uh, oh, two announcements that I want to do. First is that I have released the altcoin uh, staking. So if you want to know exactly what altcoins that I'm staking, the losses and profits made on those alts, uh, you can watch that in the new video over on the CC Pool channel, which is a channel alongside this, right? Uh, where I've come in here and explained these altcoins. So if you want to check that video out, you know, that's over on the CC pool channel, really simply, uh, you can go over here and, and, and check that video out. Make sure you subscribe to that one too, right? Uh, so that's the first announcement. If you want to go and check that altcoin video out, exactly which altcoins I am buying. 
And the other announcement is, uh, yeah, big shout out to Eagle. And I, I, actually, I want to also mention here Severin and Rivalry. The other coaches have been doing an absolute brilliant job this week. Of course, I myself personally, uh, you know, took that losing trade. But the other coaches absolutely smashing it. Uh, so, yeah, Eagle likes altcoins. Eagle loves the profits, even on the downtrends, even on the big move that we've seen here to the downside. OK, there's still profits to be made here when you are, you know, intricate and, you know, in and out of the market. So, yeah, big shout out to Severin Rivalry. And in particular here, I want to say Igor, you know, absolute legendary trader. And in my opinion, truly the best trader that has ever come through the ranks of chart champions. And we've had a lot of traders come through. Right. I really believe. Uh, and others will back this up, that Igor really is the best trader that has come through the ranks. Absolute game changer. How he analyzes the markets on those lower term time frames. Oh, he's, he's killing it, right? Guy is a true legend, fully committed to his role as a chart champions coach. Always wants to go the extra mile to help others. And, you know, perfectly is the loving family man. Got a lovely wife, lovely kids. Uh, truly a respectful guy and, you know, an inspiration to myself and many, to be honest. It's absolutely wonderful to see so yeah just wanted to give a shout out to the other coaches and here in particular Igor like absolutely legends and if you want to see more of him then of course you know where to get it right chartchampions.com uh that's what I'm going to mention there and now move on to the rest of this altcoin uh, altcoin <laughs> bitcoin analysis uh so as I mentioned altcoins of course I was looking at ETH off of a daily level that in the end didn't hold out but I'm not too worried. We have still got this lower daily level of support. But yeah, of course, uh, this was also a level. This was also a losing trade that I took because I longed this daily on, on ETH, uh, which was another bad trade, to be fair, as, as we broke down. I'm out of that one, by the way. But overall, I still hold. Uh, I'm still in ETH. OK, this was another long. Again, from much lower prices. But, uh, you know, I've given back some profits on that as well, naturally, right? But uh, overall, ETH still holding the lower daily. Okay, we've not tapped it, of course. So I'm not too worried on ETH at the moment. But I want to focus on Bitcoin analysis in this video. And so for me now, uh, being in that long from the daily, I have a few options and, and things to look at. So naturally, we have, well, right above us, this naked point of control, which is our next level of resistance. I'm always a level to level trader. So unless we can actually change the trends, which at this point, right, is going to be taking out the highs around uh, 28,300, 28,400. So unless we can reclaim, right, this is a level where we can reject from, right, the NPC. But for now, I'm going to make this very simple. And I'm going to say this to you. While we cannot reclaim this key level of resistance, this is all lower high territory where we can continue down and continue now the local downtrend. OK, so for a bullish scenario, Bulls are going to need to make their way up. We've got a CME gap to remember. So maybe the CME gap gets us to close. Uh, but what we need to be aware of is while we remain below this key level, we are looking for continuation of a downtrend, right? The way that we have to start to see sign of strength would be breaking through this level and holding it as support. If we can do that, then we can look for a larger rally to start occurring here. But this for me would be a key level as it starts the mark of our last major lower high here. And breaking this would start to change the local downtrend that we're looking at. OK, this is a key volume level two, as well as being a, a you know, a, a place where we would start to change the trend. So what we mean below this level, I naturally am expecting now local continuation of the local downtrend. Again, the overall trend is still up here this year, but locally we're in a downtrend. So this is a time to be a little bit more cautious. OK, play some caution to the wind. And it's just like here at this point, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. We started to recognize the, the, the weakness because this was a local trend change. We've made our way all the way back down to the NPOC here. Right. And so just as I was playing cautious there at 30K, well, I'm going to remain cautious here now at 27K. If I can see that reclaim, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'll have a lot more confidence and look for the overall trend to continue upwards it's still not invalidated yet okay we've started to see a local trend change but the higher term time frame trend is still intact right now uh, that would you know require lower levels of support to be lost so now i'm just playing a bit of caution to the winds um i'm not going to be you know jumping into every single long that I, opportunity that i see if i see a nice one then i'll take it you know this was a nice long opportunity that we had off of the daily because this was a swing failure pattern onto by the way the exact dollar you actually see this in the top left that exact dollar low twenty seven thousand one hundred and fifteen. 
Yeah, let's X out dollar daily here. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Uh, anyway, SFP onto the daily. Nice rise. Bit of consolidation happening now. We've got the CME gap to remember. That CME gap is going to open below us. So that's why we can be aware of a pullback here to fill that CME gap. Our CME gap opens later tonight and see where we go from there, right? Well, he can either form a little bit of a local pullback, bull flag, continuation to test our key level. That for me will be the telltale sign whether we form the lower high swing failure pattern or if we can reclaim as support. If we can, look for the bigger rally. If we cannot, I will look for my next level of the MPAC to be tested. Of course, much bigger and important support around $25,000. Uh, that's a little bit lower and out of the scope of this this video but of course we have lower support just as we have higher levels of resistance but this main aim of this video was to talk you through the loss um you know understand i wanted to i wanted to hold myself accountable and you know, i'm not going to shy away or hide, shy and hide for that so i really wanted to just give you an honest video explaining how i took my losses how i managed the trades and really it's not the end of the world right i, I personally I forgot about it the minute I took the loss, but uh, you know, naturally, I have to take a bit more accountability when it comes to the videos. So, that's some um, giving you a bit of more of an explanation because it's not often I take these losses, right? So, uh, nice opportunity to talk you through it when they come. So, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, you know what to do hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and if you want to see more from myself and the rest of the team. Well, that's where you can learn it all over at Chart Champions. You got the courses. You can learn about Elliott Waves if you want. From beginners to master level, you've got all of the course. That includes, of course, risk management, a very important factor along the side, the psychology and emotions in this market. Uh, but you can also learn upon the course, you know, the journal. You've got an inbuilt journal on the website where you can be journaling your trades and learning from your wins and losses. The vaults with the cheat sheets and the templates, the speed runs. Um, you know, if you want to take advantage of some deals that we have, all of this is available via chartchampions.com. I'll just wrap it up there. I'll say, hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've learned something from this, taken away some insights. And if you want a new technical analysis where I'll focus more on the technicals and what I'm looking at next, you know, drop a comment down below. I read every single comment that comes in. I love the support, love the uh, appreciation, and I'm truly here to try and help you become the best trader of yourself. You know, the best version that you can be of yourself. Allow me to help you. Stick along, enjoy the journey, and uh, let's crush the charts again. Okay, I'm ready for that. I'm waiting, and uh, yeah, let's get onto the charts and, and absolutely crush it together. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. That's me signing out, and goodbye. Thank you.